Hi folks, welcome to Weird Kindred's tutorial on how to create a Skolderham belt. Thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoy this video and if you've got any questions, please do give me a shout. Before we begin, a quick look at the materials you're going to need for this project. So this is your main belt yarn. This is a nice, fairly lightly spun roving yarn. These are yarns that I dyed myself with uh, walnut and pear bark. Uh, you're also going to need wrapping threads here for your tassels in whichever colours you choose. Some darning needles for weaving the ends in at the bottom. Classic pair of fabric scissors, lovely job. A tape measure for measuring out the length of your threads and some sewing clips. These are my favourite ones. They're only cheap ones. But they're really, really handy for all sorts of projects and stopping everything unwinding if you need to put it down for a minute. And last but not least, blue tack, and you'll see where that comes in in a little while. You can see from these threads laid out here, it's a 12 strand braid. I've started off with different colours just to see how it looks, mess about with the patterns a little bit. So you've got six strands each side. Each strand here consists of two threads as it does in the original belt. It does make it a little bit challenging to handle all of the threads, which is why I've come up with this peculiar system here. So I have tied my yarn at the top there. I've used my weaving frame here, which has rollers for tensioning at the top and bottom, just because it makes it so much easier to keep track of it at the top and attached it here with some very stylish string and then coming down here I've just used some very impromptu blue tack blobs <laughs> to keep my threads separate and it's massively helpful because they are very easily tangled and manipulating 12 threads in one go is quite difficult for me anyway uh, and the bottom here on each piece of thread I've actually shortened it quite a bit by wrapping it around a sewing clip to keep some of it in check while I'm manipulating the bits higher up. So each one of these had three sewing clips on when I started all wrapped full of the double threads. So to begin your braid, once you're fixed at the top, it doesn't really matter how you do it. With this belt, you actually leave ends dangling to wrap at the ends. So it does give you a nice, quite a nice loop at the top that you can use to fix to various things to keep it fixed at the top. So you've laid all your threads out, your basic pattern. You're working from one side from the right. You're coming over the top of three and under two. So I start each weave by lifting those two up out the way bringing those threads in and round, just make sure they're turning nicely at the top. Lay those down, move my three threads along. You see at the, apologies for the terrible camera work. So these three are now on the outside. You lay the two that you lifted up down. There, and then what I do just tighten up that latest pass before moving on to the next one. As you come down from doing that, pick up these two threads. You'll notice that one of my blue tacks is a different colour from the others and that marks my midpoint. So I know whenever I'm going to bring my thread from the left I can just pick up these two because with the next step you're going to come with this thread over four and under two over those four and those two come under as they're going to come back this way you move your four along lay those two down coming back up to the point where your weave's forming grab hold of this thread you've just pulled across for that side now use it all up tighten it up you're ready to do the next sweep so again, you're going to start with your thread here. You want to go over three and under two. You bring that one all the way over. And that then 
comes just to the right hand side of your middle marker there. Move your threads along, lay those two down. And tighten it up. Basically, it's just this now, over and over again. We've just done now. If you get lost, this is because I've just forgotten which side I was on there. So when you come up to the top here, you're going to see your last pass is the very bottom one. So it opens up there, that lays on top. This is your bottom one. Okay, you know you've just come from that side, so you need to bring this side over now, over four lay it down just there in its little new resting place that you've opened up by lifting these pick these out the way lay those two down and tighten it up and so gradually if you've got your pattern right this side starts all beige they'll all move over there and you'll have nice neat lines if i do one more set you'll see it's in the third set there, one, two, over four, under two, now you've got a nice even spread of threads again of three brown, three beige, three brown, three beige, it'll all move over again and it'll just repeat that over and over again until you get that nice that's, it's a very unusual pattern on that one nice unusual repeat and as if by magic we're back so we've now finished braiding all the lengths now i started off with about 90 inches of thread in each run and the finished belt this part where it's woven here like this is 55 inches which is roughly what I was hoping for it's a little bit shorter but it's absolutely functional as it is now however the original find had these beautiful tassels so in this section we're going to look at how to make those now you can see if I bring the braid a little bit closer that's the pattern on the front and behind you get this lovely unusual swoosh which I absolutely love um, so having them there that's front and back together and once you've got to your desired length you use the ends that you left unwrapped this is actually the top this section here you can see it's actually a little bit looser than the braid is at the other end as I've got better at doing it um, but it's not going to make any difference in the actual wearing of the item so when you're ready to begin what I've done here is I've separated out into three separate strands and just clipped in the middle there to hold it in place while I was working on the other one so you want to arrange it so that you've you follow the natural lines as much as possible in this one it's fairly easy to see as you end up with two colours in the centre and one each side it's different now I'm showing you this bit just because it's a little bit difficult to see at first because this is the top when I originally tied it I didn't lay out the threads in any particular order so it took a little bit of untangling but if you leave I start with the middle because it just works better for my brain that way. I clip those to that side. You should have eight strands in each third because the original braid was 24. Secure these out of the way with your sewing clips. And then pop those out of the way for a minute while you look at this bit. So what I do, because I don't want it going anywhere, is I knot, so I put two knots in the thread at the top here, fairly loose, 
but just to hold it in place because what that does when you attach your wrapping threads which are these ones I've just got ready here you don't want them sliding down and the knots help to stop that happening and keep the belt looking nice for longer so I need the first knot and then I take the second one between so I've got the bottom of the knot there this time another loose knot there and then just tighten it to bring it up to the top there so this is your core of your wrapped thread I keep them I don't twist them I don't think there's any need to twist them really but I just pop a couple of sewing clips onto the lengths to keep them together while I'm working now as you can see the colors that I'm using here are the same colors that I've used in these braids which is the cuffs of the tunic from the Skulderham find you can use whatever colors you like whatever your costume is focused on colour wise, doesn't matter. However, I've just used a variation on the colours that were present in the actual find. Now, if I bring this forward a little bit, what I'm doing is I'm working from this diagram. This is a picture from Lovely's thesis on the Golden Ham textiles. And I'm just doing a rough copy of the banding pattern. That was used on the originals in similar colours to make my belt. This second one here is what I'm going to be working on to do this end of the belt. So because I'm doing the middle strand at the moment I'll be working on this banding pattern. It starts with green then orange then red then orange then green then all red again. I like this one it's my favourite this bit. So we're going to start off with that today. Now, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to show you wrapping the entire thing because that would take ages. But I'll show you how I fix the threads at the top and then the first steps of winding down and then we'll cut to doing the tassels in a little while. So, to begin, you have here your knots. You make sure this is all well out of the way. Tuck it up there. Now, you start this run with green. So... We're going to take our green thread and double it over. We've got the loop there. Take that round the back. Make sure it's above the knots because that will stop it slipping down. Reach inside, put it all the way through, draw it tightly at the top. When you start wrapping, you're going to go back on yourself rather than trying to wrap that way. So that's your first thread. The next colour on this run is the orange. So I'm going to do the orange next. And these where, where these threads are fixed is going to be covered by the first lot of wrapping. So we go down inside here. Don't catch that thread because you're going to wrap with that one. So you want that well out of the way. Make sure these two just go just underneath. And they can come down with the rest of the wrapping with the core threads for now. And then same again with your red. Just here. Got the loop. You're going to open up the loop with your thumb and forefinger. Thumb and forefinger. And pull it through. Tighten it up. Now they're quite happy there. So you take your green thread. And it's handy to have a little bit of tension on this as you start. So often I just add a couple of sewing clips at the bottom to give it a little bit of weight to it. As long as you're firmly tied at the top, you can control the tension with your left hand here. So, start off 
and the way I do it is I hold it with my thumb and forefinger with my left hand. I use my left index finger to hook around and then pull from the top with my right hand. Now at the very beginning here, it's a little bit tricky. This becomes much easier as you get further down. You keep the two threads together. So working with a doubled thread makes this a lot faster. If you're working with even thicker thread, then it would go more quickly again. But I quite like the fact that this is quite fine. Wrap it round, hook it, bring it over. That's starting to, there's a little gap there. So I'm just going to go back over that. Sometimes the top bits can be a little bit lumpy. How precise you want to get this is entirely up to you. And keep wrapping. Now if I just check, yep, so this one has a fairly long green section at the beginning, so I'll carry on for a moment. And then when I get to the colour change, I'll show you how to switch colours easily. Okay, so you're ready to switch colours. You've got your different colour yarns here. They will, well, they like to move around and dance about as you go, but it's very easy to find them. So you find the point at which they're naturally resting. And we are going to switch to orange first. So you tuck the red out of the way. You take your green over the top of your orange and then your orange thread comes up and over the top of the green. So you can see there it's crossed, it's wrapped, comes up and then you begin wrapping with the orange. Now the orange section here is very short so I'm only going to do three wraps before we're then going to switch to the red. So I hope this is clear enough to see. I apologise, my camera skills are not up to much yet, but I will get better. So you're ready, you take your orange over, you get hold of your red, you bring the red up and over the orange, so they switch places. Bring your orange down, hold it tightly with the others, threads there for the core, and wrap again. And as you come over that join, just make sure that it's laid nicely over the join and you don't see it then. And you carry on in this fashion. I do three turns of this thread for the, each little bar on the pattern. We're going to switch again. We've got our red there. Flip it. Bring the red down. Oop, that's come loose. So if it starts to come loose like that, just start again. Just bring it up to the top. Flip, tuck your red down tight, carry on wrapping with your orange. If your threads come apart, just ease off a little bit, come back, wrap again. It's worth going back. If you see a bit and you look back up and you think, oh, that bit three thread with loops above is a bit dodgy, go back and just, just unwind it and do it again. Because mm -hmm. if you're anything like me, it will drive you absolutely balmy knowing that it's sitting there so the next little bit is a tiny bit of green which is quite unusual because you don't normally in this pattern get switches like this but this middle cord is a little bit different to the ones on either side the pattern's slightly different I'm going to wrap to there and at this point I shall leave you for a bit and we'll come back when it's time to do a tassel And many wrappings later, we now have a middle strand similar to the middle strand on the other side. I've pinned it just there with a sewing clip, just so I can make sure my lengths are roughly the same. So on this, where I'm about to start doing the knot part at the end, which is a little bit thicker to secure everything, instead of just wrapping once, because it's about to become a difficult part. I'm going to just make a little knot 
and it helps the cord not slip about quite so much. Use that brown tape you really want to. Okay, so now for this next part, what we're going to do is we're going to unclip all this. One second, which will just make it a little bit easier for you to see there. Take those clips off and split your threads into two groups. I'm splitting them by colours, but you could mix them if you wanted to. There's no, no rules here. So I'm using a slightly thicker, fluffier wool in a, in a fairly similar green to make my tassels a little bit more fluffy like the originals. I couldn't read the details for exactly how these tassels were constructed so I've just done something that works. But if you want to do this method, go for it. So I folded that into three so there's the six strands total each side. In the middle, roughly there. Lay that in the middle of these two. And tie it nice and thin. Just make sure you don't end up with your wrapping threads tied in as well because you don't want that. Just all out the way. Simple knot will be absolutely fine because we're going to bind the rest of this with the cord so it won't go anywhere. So what I'm doing now is just having a look, making sure I've got everything where it should be. Bring it down, that's my knot on the other side. Let's tighten that up a little bit more. And then do the same with the new threads you're adding in with this lovely fuzzy roving wool. There we go. Now just give it a wiggle. Try and get the knots to sit just one under the other. And once you're happy, you can start the process of wrapping all of these up in your wrapping thread. So I give it a nice squeeze, pull it down into a straight comb that you can work with again. Find your threads which like to hide and jump about. And I've made the mistake of tying it in there. That was silly. <laughs> oh, you do do this by accident. And you don't want to undo it all. Just grab the needle. So you can tease out your wrapping threads like that. So I've made three of these. I've not done that once. And as soon as I start trying to film it, things get. The thing you never worry, don't worry about making mistakes with stuff like this because nine times out of ten there's an easy way to fix it. Okay, so now we're going to carry on wrapping our green thread there. difficulty you'll find is that as it starts to get bigger the cord just wants to ride up that way all the time but if you can squeeze it keep it regular you'll find that it is possible so on the original one half of this wrapping part is green and the other half is red so I'm going to switch to the red now, same as before, just taking it over itself. Finish this tassel off. I'm 
not the right way. Lovely. Now, what you need to do to finish it is just weave these threads in. Now, I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends. And you may develop your own method for doing this, but to keep it nice and secure, I just like to take it round once. Tight. Once more. And this is for your, for your final wrapping thread. The other ones aren't quite as complicated. So and you pop your needle inside, find a nice gap, and pull it through. You tighten it up there, and you're left with a practically invisible finish. Just for ease's sake, I've already loaded these onto additional needles, but you don't need to do this. It's just to make it a little bit quicker to show you the final finishing bit. So this one, literally just go in as close as you can to where it begins. Tighten it up. And the same again with the green. Some routes through you'll find are exceedingly stiff because obviously you're passing through the knot in the tassel there. So you won't get all the way through if you start that. So just move around, try somewhere else. No, that one won't go through, so you need to come back and try again. This is a particularly thick needle, so it's the only one I have left. <laughs> And goes through nice and easily. So those are finished now. Just take your scissors, snip as close as you can, make sure you do not catch any of the wrapping thread that you actually want to keep. Just rub it slightly, the end disappears. Same again with this one. now is a slightly curly but that'll be fine just to give it a wiggle and that's your tassel posted and what I'm doing is I'm leaving them all loose until the end and then I will cut them all exactly the same roughly length once I've finished because the, the originals are exceedingly fluffy where all of this has just come apart and ended up as fluff but yeah so that is the fairly simple steps to making a rather gorgeous set of tassel bins for your belt.